What's up, people of the Internet Web Step, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to talk superheroes and comic books. And with Infinity War coming out fairly recently, I thought I would talk about Doctor Strange because he plays an important part in that film. But the thing I want to ask is, how did his film do so well? DC versus Marvel is a conversation, an argument, a debate which most comic book fans, and now movie fans, will attempt to steer away from. Yet, both fans claim to have the better comic book. But, as a DC fan myself, I think we can't really argue that Marvel is winning the battle of the cinematic universes. Which, as I said, being a DC fanboy is a bit annoying for me. Marvel are brighter, they pop more, and they have more fun whilst also being more structurally sound than their DC counterparts. But at the end of the day, despite the colour grade and the slow motion, there isn't actually that much difference between the two universes. And this is probably typified by Green Lantern and Doctor Strange. Now, Green Lantern is a film which makes me so damn sad. I went to the cinema to see this film, and I was so excited. I love the Green Lantern comic books. That is the comic book that I collect. It was something that I got religiously until I had to start being an adult and look after my money and not spend it on comics. I mean, come on, look at the casting. Ryan Reynolds as Hal Jordan. And the fact that Taika Waititi is in this film makes it ten times better. But at the end of the day, the film was a pile of wank. And there's not much we can do about it. And that resulted in Green Lantern getting a 26% Rotten Tomatoes score from the critics. Yet another film, strangely, see what I did there, which is hugely similar, rocked an 89% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes. Doctor Strange is a film that I am not a huge fan of. But you're probably wondering, why on earth are you comparing these two films from DC and Marvel? Well, that is what I'm going to explain, because these two films are ridiculously similar. First off, we have the two main characters, who are arrogant and selfish and have a fear of failing. They also both have daddy issues. I mean, come on, you can't, you cannot deny that Doctor Strange has some serious daddy issues. I don't care that it's not explained in the film. This is also met with the fact that they're both awful drivers. Like, really bad. And they both manage not to change throughout the film. At all! This is then followed with a comparison of two bald people getting them involved in a secret, ancient organisation. And these mentors, or in Green Lantern's case, the guy who gives him his power ring, they die or get killed, and that results in them taking their place. Similar so far, right? It gets worse. Now the weapons. Their weapons are sentient fashion accessories allowing for flight. And they're both able to use these sentient weapons to create constructs from their own imagination using their willpower and their brains. Oh, and they both have an extra piece of jewellery or an item that emits a motherfucking green light that gives them more power. You're probably thinking, yeah, yeah, but these are like cookie cutter films. Of course, they're going to be similar. But I would like to point out that this doesn't go to little things like I've already pointed out. It goes as far as some of the characters. Look at Kilowog and Wong. They are characters who start off cold and not really liking the main character. And they're both big guys, they're both built like brick shit houses. But eventually, they become best friends. Then you have Sinestro and Mordo, who are great characters through the films. They're kind of not good nor bad, but they're rough around the edges and they don't like the main character that much. They help with their training, they really beat their shit into them, but then in the after credits scene, they set them up as the villain for the next film. I'm not even kidding. They literally have the same after credits scene in the fact that this grey character becomes evil. You also have the fact that both films have two villains in it. One's a tiny little human with weird features, and the other's a giant talking planet eating head. You have the little human villains in Hector Hammond and Caselius who ultimately get killed by their masters. 
And then you have Parallax, who should not have been in the first Green Lantern film. He's a big villain. Why are you doing that? And Dormammu, who again, ah, amazingly, the organization in which both of these main characters work for have some involvement in the creation of this evil being and the fact that they want to kill shit. They are ultimately responsible for the chaos that is happening. As I said, ultimately, near the end of the film, the little villains get killed, and then the big main villains fight the main characters and are defeated by them in an underwhelming way using a trick. A trick! As I said before, both characters have now lost the bald leaders. In Green Lantern, you also have the little bald leaders ignoring the original bald guy who set him up. But they gain the respect of this organization and start to lead it. But they're still the same dickish character they were at the start. They just have a lot more responsibility. And let's not forget the pointlessness of the love interests. Both of them are irrelevant to the film. They could be cut out. And they both seem to give them up for their greater good. Now, can someone please try and explain to me how these films have such vastly different responses from the audiences and critics? If anything, the Green Lantern film should have done better than the Doctor Strange film. We weren't clogged up with all of these superhero films then. But for some reason, it's universally lambasted. And I am also guilty of this in the fact that I remember being at HMV once and I had bought a few DVDs and I got offered Green Lantern for free and I turned it down. And I wasn't the first person to do it. There was a whole stack of them there. The only real reason I can see why one was so well received and the other one was not could stem from the use of CG, which in Green Lantern is horrendous. Like, his suit makes me die a little inside. And the CG in Doctor Strange is okay, it's funky. So you've also got the fact that they use an actual costume in Doctor Strange. But I think the most damning thing of all is the reason that Green Lantern failed and Doctor Strange succeeded was it's Marvel. Because, you know, as a franchise, Marvel apparently can't do anything wrong. Maybe I've missed something that makes Doctor Strange a better, stronger film. Maybe it was Benedict Cumberbatch's American accent that just sold it. Or it was the whitewashing of the ancient one. Or it was just the zeitgeist of the time. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy. Please comment, rate, subscribe. It was a slight variation on what I usually do. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, tell me and I will do more shit like this. Again, thank you for watching and I shall see you again soon.